For your word says, unto you shall the guardian of your people be. We affirm and declare that unto you we have come, not ourselves, not to regime, not to religion, not to whatsoever, but to you alone. And we pray and ask that you will make yourself manifest amongst us in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will touch us from person to person and touch us where the need is greatest in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will reveal yourself to us and make known, no Father, your ways unto us, even as you did with Moses, in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against all barriers to knowing you, all barriers to hearing you, all barriers to seeing you. We come against them by the blood of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against every spirit of distraction, those things that seem to stop us only when we are in church, we come against them by the blood of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that the heaven over today's service, even as has been, and from now henceforth shall be open in the mighty name of Jesus. That the heaven over every individual heart, over individual soul, over every individual person and family here gathered shall be open in the mighty name of Jesus. And I humble myself, Father, before you and lend myself unto you for full use, O oh, Father, for the blessing of your people and myself, inclusive in the name of Jesus, Amen. and all these lips of clay of mine, O oh, Father God, to speak as an oracle of the living God, and let your word carry the fire that is in the word of God, and bring forth conviction, O oh, Father, and salvation. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be comfortably seated. If you are not already comfortably seated, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You are welcome to church. Good to see you. Because seeing you kind of makes my day. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today we want to look at a sermon topic which has been, I have titled The Biblicality of Planning. The biblicality of planning. Amen. 
when I was writing the sermon and the topic dropped into my heart, so I have to find what is the meaning of biblicality. Because some things just come into my spirit that I haven't had before. I just check them out. The Bible says, test all spirits to see if they are of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you are doing the things of God, even the things that you haven't known can suddenly appear. All you have to do is test this. And if it's of the Lord, you make use of it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So biblicality means the quality of being Biblical. So it turned out it is an English word. Amen. Amen. So if somebody now asks you what is the biblicality of your being in this service today, praise the name of the Lord. You will reply the person assuming that you know that the Bible says, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren. Praise the name of the Lord. And as Christians, as we grow in Christ, the things we do and the things we say and the things we think should have a biblicality to it. Because when there is a biblicality to it, it means it will carry the power of the Holy Ghost. Praise the name of the Lord. When I was a little boy growing up in the boarding school, they have to have, we used to have a call. Those of you who are fairly good as me. They call the call. Who sent to you? Praise the name of the Lord. Now let me explain for the young one, which are 99% of the people here. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. This cup, the police who sent you is today's modern day big job. So in the secondary school then, we used to have what we call fagging. So if you're in class one or two or three, you'll be serving the senior ones. And we, the junior ones, usually come with a lot of provision because we have not, we have not borrowed sense. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We have not borrowed sense. So the senior ones, they will bring a big cup and they give it to you and they will say, go and put one meter inside it and put to this thing and all that. Before you know, within one, two weeks, your provision has finished. Amen. So depending on the size of the cup, when you see a big cup brought to you, then the question will be, who sent you? If they now mention the name of the person that sent them and it's one of the terror big boys, Bully your senior prefect and all that, then you know you have to you have to feed that call. Praise the name of the Lord. But if they say who sent you and you mention one who you hear down, tell him I don't have anything. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So where that relates to us is that when you do some things, the devil will say, Who sent you? Praise the name of the Lord. And if that thing you're doing have a biblicality, biblicality to it. You will say that Jesus sent me. Praise the name of the Lord. And when you say that Jesus sent you, matter don't close. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. For the Bible says, He that is in us is greater than He that is in the world. Praise the name of the Lord. And who is He that is in us? By the Holy Ghost. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus is in heaven, but He is in us by the Holy Ghost. Who lives in us? So Holy Spirit does not live in 10 Downing Street. Holy Spirit does not live in White House. Holy Spirit does not live in Birmingham. And actually, who lives in what? It means what that is. So a warehouse is where you put wells. Praise the name of the Lord. A palace is where a monarch lives. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So if the Holy Spirit of God lives in you, it means you are the temple of God. Hallelujah. So it's who lives what it determines the house. It's the, the inhabitant of the house that determines the value of the house. It's not the house that determines the value of the person. It's the person that lives inside the house that determines the value of the house. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So biblicality of planning. Then what is planning? The sermon has commenced too, because we have done prayer. Amen. What is planning? Planning is thinking ahead. Anytime you think ahead, you are planning. Whether you are doing it consciously or unconsciously. So now know it. Planning is what? Thinking ahead is planning. Praise the name of the Lord. What is planning? Planning is proactive anticipation, not reactive, proactive anticipation. If I do this, 
he is likely to do this. What shall I do then? Proactive what? That is planning. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. What is planning? Planning is proactive for sin. Proactive for sin. Proactive for sin. Praise the name of the Lord. There's a country they call Nigeria now, yes or no? There are so many things on the social media, lack of cash. It's because many people have not foreseen that there will be hiccup in the course of the swap from the old to the new. If they had foreseen it, they would have, in little bits and pieces, been able to exchange the thing before the demand had scopes the supply. Praise the name of the Lord. The rich men now that are rich, none of them is sending SOS message to. I got an SOS message to somebody from Nigeria. He said, I am cashless, send money and say, so how you take get the money from the bank? Praise the name of the Lord. He said, no, I should send it in dollar. Then he will take it to Manam. And Manam will give them the new. I said, okay, so Manam had proactive anticipation. So Manam has new money now. You want the lot to go and collect. If you have had proactive anticipation, you would have had your own currency as Manam has his own currency. So there are those that have proactive. And those that have proactive anticipation, they are now selling the money to people that didn't have proactive anticipation. That is planning. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What is planning? Planning is proactive preparedness. Proactive preparedness. That is planning. What is planning? Planning is the diligent commitment of time and resources in the worship of God in Christ Jesus. Planning is the diligent, diligent commitment of your time and resources in the worship of God. I've said it before, and if you haven't had it, the only thing that is free is salvation. Yes or no? Christianity is not free. Your salvation is free, but your Christianity is not free. Your Christianity comes with paying a cost, self-sacrifice, discipline, denying yourself. If you don't plan for it, you are planning to fail. That's why you see some people, they have kwashoko in Christianity. They have uh, malnutrition Christianity. They have uh, whatever they have. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And we come to where Jesus said it bluntly, openly, but some people don't read it. Amen. Where he says you count your course, whether you can carry the. And if you think you can't carry it, all you have to say, God, it did exist in view. Amen. And he will give you grace. But you cannot just say, uh, and then some people also want to use boom face, like, uh, like Peter. When Jesus said to Peter, he said, Before the crow crowd, you will deny Peter, say that one will happen. Praise the name of the Lord. He was using boom face. You cannot serve God with both face. It's a work of grace. Amen. So those are about biblicality and planning. Now we want to look at reasons why we plan and we need to move fast. Reasons why we plan. And by, your, by the grace of God, I believe I'm recording this so that you have a, a reference point if you're not taking notes. In no particular order, and the list is not exhaustive. Why are the reasons we plan? Planning is a remedy for laziness. Planning is a remedy. I hope you know what remedy means. You are in England, you are in the United Kingdom, my sister here, yeah, and my precious one at that can tell you the meaning. Ah, thank you. Two of them already. Where is a uh, sister Marian? Amen. Yes, you are also one of those you are entitled to the festival of seats because you are the star kids for the year. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. Praise the name of the Lord. He didn't say give it to Baba or give it to Mama. To whom honor is due. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's see Proverbs chapter 6 verse 6. Proverbs 6, 6. Proverbs 6, 6. And I'll read. You do where to follow me in your Bible. The Bible is saying here, and that is the word of God to you and I and to everyone who cares to listen and take it to heart. He said, go to the ant. 
thou slogan. That is, go to the ant, they see you. Go to the ant, you coach potato. Go to the ant, consider her ways and be wise. So planning and plan, ants plan. Ants plan. They gather in the summer against winter. So even as ants, that when you are looking at ants, you are wondering, where is the brain of this thing? We are in brain day. Praise the name of the Lord. You that has a Obongo brain, the Bible says, go and, go, go and see that one. Praise the name of the Lord. Like my sister said the other day, it's not about the size, it's about the potency. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why those that have bigger heads are not necessarily more intelligent than those with smaller heads. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's not the size. Amen. Amen. Elephant is not smarter than ant because the Bible never told us to go to elephant. He said, go to the ant. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Another question we want to look at is Matthew, sorry, another verse we want to look at is Matthew 25, 21. If you are there, could you just give us that? Matthew 25, 21. Planning is a remedy for laziness. Planning is a remedy for laziness. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things he has done. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things he has done. Matthew 25, 21 says, his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou now into the joy of thy Lord. This was the commendation that the Lord Jesus Christ made of the servant that planned and made investments that brought 100% return. So planning is a remedy to leadiness. Why do we plan? Planning depicts wisdom and shrewdness. Luke chapter 14, verses 28 to 33. Planning depicts wisdom and shrewdness. Luke chapter 14, verses 28 to 33. And I read, praise the name of the Lord. Verses 28 to 33. For which of you intending to build a tower, sit it not down, that is to sit down first. I remember something one man of God, in fact, is a bishop, said many years ago when I was a young Christian that struck me. Those who are back in the days, we used to have what we call yellow book. And for the younger ones that don't know what yellow book is, it's a place you list all telephone numbers and directories. Then there was no smartphone, so you can't save the number on anybody. And the phones they used to have is rotary phone. You put your hand in it. You dial it. Praise the name of the Lord. So there was zero. And this man of God says, the time you take to check out somebody's name in the yellow book to get their number to call them is not a wasted time. And if you want to know whether it's a wasted time, don't go to the yellow book. Just be using the phone and dialing randomly until you get through force. When the ring, he says that with force, he says it's not with force number. No, no, no. You dial another one. He's that with force, he's not with force, you drop. You, do, you will be doing that until the cows come home. So time of planning is not a wasted time. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So this guy that the Lord is referring to in Matthew chapter, sorry, in Luke chapter 14, verses 28, he says, For which of you intended to build a tower, see the Lord and first, and counted the cost whether he will have sufficient to finish it. Least happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man, this woman, this child began to build and was not able to finish it. Or what king going into war against another king, seated not down first and consulted whether he or she be able to with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Verse 33. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he had, he cannot be my disciple. Amen. To forsake all you have is to put all the totality of you into following God. And that means for planning. Why do we plan? Planning makes us as God because God is the supreme planner, which we shall soon see. 
Why do we need to plan? Planning helps us to be firm. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 7 to 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 15 to 20. Planning makes us to be firm. When you have a plan, let's say you are planned to come to church, and suddenly your neighbor comes and say, ah, there is this thing on the television. If you have a plan, you will be firmer than when you didn't have a plan. Praise the name of the Lord. If you have a plan, you will be firm. Because the tendency will be to conform to your plan, especially if you are reasonably disciplined. Amen. And anybody who makes plan implicitly is a disciplined person. Praise the name of the Lord. So planning helps us to be firm. Reasons for planning and why planning is vital to Christians. Planning prepares us for future needs. We go back again to the issue of the ants. Verse 6, Proverbs 6, 8, which we have already alluded to. Proverbs 6, 8. He says, remove... Sorry, 6, 8. He says, provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. So planning makes for provision of future needs. Why is it essential for Christians to plan? Planning helps defeat excuses and puts faith into actions. We see that in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 10 to 11. Lastly, but not the least, planning helps reduce adverse surprises. When you plan, you mitigate adverse surprises. When you plan, you reduce the risk of adverse surprises. A very common saying goes that he who fails to plan, plans to fail. In other words, he who fails to plan opens themselves up to adverse surprises. They open themselves up to adverse surprises. Let's take an example from the Bible of planners. First and foremost is God. God is what we call a consummate planner, which means he's a supreme planner. He's a perfect planner. He's a flawless planner. If you like, he's an addicted planner. Praise the name of the Lord. And we see that in the case of Joseph. Joseph was sold by his brothers into slavery. But later on in Genesis chapter 45 verse 5, we saw from the mouth of Joseph, praise the name of the Lord, that God allowed that thing to happen so he can preserve Israel. So why the brothers were screaming and are getting all jealous and getting all envious and feeling all murderers, God was planning to use that for the purpose of his kingdom, which includes us. Praise the name of the Lord, because we are the Israelites of God if we are genuinely born again. Praise the name of the Lord. Next example is that God planned salvation before the creation of the world. So the fact that Adam will fall, the fact that Jesus will need to come, the fact that salvation will be open to you and I was already planned by God before he created the world. We see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7. God also planned that salvation will include the Jews and include the Gentiles. It will include the Jews and include the Gentiles. That salvation will not just be automatic because you are a descendant of Abraham, but will be automatic on your confession of your need of Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. We find that in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 6. God also is showing how much of a consummate planner he is. Instructed Moses that Moses must seek to the heavenly details in the building of the tabernacle. We see that in Exodus 25, verse 9 and verse 40. In verse 40, God said to Moses, ensure that you stick to the detailed plan. Ensure that you stick to the detailed design. Do not add, do not subtract. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And then we go to other personalities in the Bible. We see King David. King David planned the building of God's temple. Let's go to First Chronicles, Chronicles chapter 28, verse 2. 
First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 2. Hallelujah. First Chronicles 28, verse 2. If you are there, say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praising the Lord always. Praising the Lord always. Praising the Lord with all my heart. Praising the Lord with all my heart. Always. Hallelujah, my Lord is good. Hallelujah, my Lord is good. Hallelujah, our Lord is good. Is good. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 2 says, Then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, I had in my heart to build an house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the first two of our God and had made ready for the building. I had in my heart, which means I planned it, to build it. I planned to build it. Are you planning to be the temple of the Lord? Which is first and foremost your body. Are you planning to edify your body? Are you planning to make your body exclusively that of the Holy Spirit? Amen. David said, I had in my heart to build a house of the Lord. David was a planner. And in all his battles, he planned it. Praise the name of the Lord. When he went to meet Goliath, that king said to David, we are this, your babies, I have not tested this one. I have a plan. And that plan is my reliance on God. The God who delivered me from the hand, the paws of the lion and the paws of the bear, the same God who delivered me from this Gentile. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you have a plan to rely on God? Or do you have a plan of a bingo? Gambling, seeing which works and what we work. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Another planner is Joseph. And we see Joseph's wisdom manifested via his strategic plan in Genesis chapter 41, verses 34 to 36. We had Joseph gave the Pharaoh the cancer. He says, Well, in the first years of plenty, you will need to gather them and store them. Then in the other section of black, black, black then you will need to use from what you have. Some people, when they earn money, they finish it. Praise the name of the Lord. And it's most accurate in this country. People live from hand to mouth, from paycheck to paycheck. Somebody has always said that if you finish all you earn, it either means you are greedy or you are earning too small or both. If you finish everything you earn, they pay you 1,000, you, you, you chop 1,001. It's either you are glutonous or you are not being paid enough or put. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So learn to store up like Joseph said to the king. Lastly, but not the least, is Nehemiah. Nehemiah planned to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. We see that in Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 15 to 16. So if there were to be in a law court with all that I've said so far, the lawyers will say, I put it to you. Praise the name of the Lord. So I put it to you that planning is appropriate for Christians. Say with me, planning is appropriate for Christians. Amen. Some people have argued, hey, but if God is planning, now why should I plan? When you are planning to live in the plan of God, praise the name of the Lord. You see some children, and the Bible talk covers it in the, I think, the Ecclesiastes. Some children come from wealthy rooms, and their wealthy parents have made plans for them. But the children made no plan to stay in the plan of their parents. So as soon as the parents die, they finish the money. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Another example of people who make no plan for the things that fortune has planned for them is those who win lottery. 
majority statistics and research have shown that majority of people who win lottery after a couple of years become poor because they did not plan to abide in the wealth that the lottery has brought for them. The necessity to plan. So now we are moving to action points, and there are two sets of action points. So as we move to God, we round up. Amen. Action point set number two: how not to plan. There is a way as a Christian that you should not plan, and we find that from James chapter four, verses thirteen to seventeen. And just to make an exposition of those verses, one of the ways we ought not to plan, or we should not plan as Christians, is that do not plan as if you are in control. God is the one that is in control. Do not plan as if you are what? God is the one that is in control. Do not plan as if you can foretell the future. That is arrogance. God is the only one who can tell the future. And he's the only one who has the future in his hands. That's what James chapter 4 verses 13 to 17 is teaching us. Do not make plans unless it is holistically aligned with the will of God. As a child of God, as a Christian, as a believer, as a member of this church, as an MFMite or whatever might you want to call yourself, Redeemite or, or Congolismite, praise the name of the Lord. Your plans must always tally with the plan of God. Tally with the will of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And maybe Sunday we teach about it. It's one of the errors that devil pushes people to. People will make plans based on the can of God rather than on the will of God. It's not everything that God can do that he will do. Are you with me? So you have to plan on what he will do, not what he can do. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why we keep hearing the will of God, not the can of God, the will of God, the will of God. That is what God will do within what he can do. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So do make plans, do not make plans that are not aligned to the will of God. That is, another way is that you must submit your plans to God through prayers, through meditations, through biblical reviews, through counseling. You must submit your God your plans to God because God, as a child of God, God is the approver of your plan. He must be the approver what? Of your plan. David said to God, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? Will I recover all? So that means he had a plan to pursue. He had a plan to overtake. He had a plan to recover everything. But he took it to God and said, what say thou? God said, you will pursue overtake. David said, thank you, sir. Amen. And he went into action. Some of us, as soon as we make what seems like a good plan, even what is a good plan, we rush into it without approval. It's like now in headquarters, I'm not talking about here because here every one of us are okay. Amen. In headquarters now, you can't make any bright plan you want to make. And you start executing the plan without that the GR approval. Who on you? Praise the name of the Lord. Even if now you say the Holy Spirit don't tell you. Amen. God is still a God of order. You cannot say that Jesus said, Why are you there? I said, Daddy, the Holy Spirit tell me. Okay, for this church, I mean. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So, no matter how bright your plan is, you must get God's approval. And if God has a structure, let's say you're a child, underage child, you need to get your parental approval and guidance. Praise the name of the Lord. And your spouse, you need to also get your spousal approval. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Because God is a God of structure. He's not a God of confusion. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Next way to plan is that we must make our plans in pencil and allow God to have the eraser so he can clean it and change it to something else. Praise God. That's action set number one. Action set number two, and this is where you will do well to listen up. This is the year that the Lord has declared through his servant, our Father in the Lord, that it is a year of our glorious the question and the assignment is what is your plan towards that? Do you think it will automatically happen? 
I said to people, the only time that God rained manna from heaven was when the children of Israel were walking through the wilderness. Because they were not going to farm. They were on transit. As soon as they moved from the wilderness and entered the last land of promise, what happened? The manna stopped. The manna what? So some of the grace they brought from Egypt is what they need to now go and till the soil and plant it and reap it and cook it and reserve and plant again. And with the cow and the goat they brought, they had made. The manna what? Stopped. So this is the day of our glorious manifestation. First thing for you and I, if you are intending to plug into that prophecy, you have to define for yourself what is glorious manifestation. And as I will tell to you, first of all, because it's an English word, pick up a dictionary. Find first what is manifestation. Let me not assume I know it because English is not my mother tongue. What is manifestation? You find out what is manifestation. Then you find out what is glorious. Then you sit down by inquiry prayer, by meditation, by communion with God. You find out. And by your own sense, the Bible says God has given us, we have the mind of Christ. Say, I have sense. I have sense. Christianity is not a senseless uh, whatever. That you are born again did not mean God scoop out your sense and put in the dustbin. That is not what was done. What was done is that he gave you a new spirit. He gave you a new heart. The Bible does not say he removed your brain. Praise the name of the Lord. There's nowhere in the Bible, and if you find it, I'm willing to take back my word. There's nowhere in the Bible, the Bible says, as soon as you got born again, God removed your brain. He didn't remove your brain. What he did, he gave you a new heart, a heart of flesh, and took away a stony heart. He did a heart transplant. He didn't do a, a brain transplant. So you need your brain to think. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So you define for yourself what is glorious uh, manifestation. And for you, glorious manifestation may be one or two items. It might be a set of things. It might be improvement in your relation skills, in your social skills. It might be prayer life. It might be your quality life. Glorious manifestation might be, you know, this is the day I will be announced. Amen, Mo. Hallelujah. Amen. Glorious manifestation for you might be a job change, either within your organization or outside of your organization. Glorious manifestation for you might be finding the will of God for you, finding your gift in Christ, finding where you need to service, serve God in. So first and foremost, you define what is your glorious manifestation. Then you plan. Once you have defined it, then you have a picture because planning is pro proactive foreseeing. So you now have a picture. Ah, this is what for me is glorious manifestation. I'm going to focus on it. The Bible says, write the vision and make it plain. So you have that glorious manifestation. I thank God that we are not too late in preaching this sermon. It's only February. So you can, if you haven't thought of it, haven't planned it, you can. And this goes down, especially, in fact, I'm so passionate more for our youth. Amen. So that they can key into it. And if you're a youth, you are allowed to overtake your parents in all their accomplishment and qualities. The only thing you are not allowed to overtake them is in their badness. Say with me, badness. Praise the name of the Lord. It's in their badness. Amen. That is how our future generation can be better than the former. When our children overtake us in their love for God, overtake us in their passion for God, overtake us in their revelation of the things of God, overtake us in their ambitions and desires, both in the quality of it and in the alignment of, of God. So you are allowed to overtake them. Amen. When I got born again, my parents were being born again. So don't let your own parent that is born again, but is uh, his own born again, he get as he be. And you're allowing that one to block your way. Meander around them and continue. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen? You have my permission to do that. Amen? Meander around them and continue. Because at the end of the day, salvation is personal. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen? 
So as soon as you can know your way to enter bus, enter bus and be here. When they come, they see you here. I say, Mommy, good morning. Because they didn't see you when you left. Praise the name of In your quarter, it's happening. All those youths that are singing, you see them in power. You think they wait for their mother to, to, to be agony. They are up here. Some of them is in church, they greet their mother good morning because when they were coming, the mother was still having a lion. Some of them said, Papa, no, they come church. It was. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God will make a way. We have a song. God will make a way. We are the same to be no way. He walks in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my heart. So, do you have plans for eternal matters? Do you have plans for church? Your church membership, is it a plan? Are you working it by plan? Or make a they come, now make a just they come. You have to have to have a plan. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you have a plan concerning your spirituality? Do you have a plan? Concerning your relationship with God and relationship with one another, and even relationship with unbelievers. One of my daughters in this church, he said the Holy Spirit had told her to cut off from some of her friends, but that she doesn't think the friends are bad. Ha! Okay. The Holy Spirit that told you sees more than you see. Just so that is not about what you see. Just say, just tell yourself. Holy Spirit knows more than me. That is enough. You know, sometimes when we get into a situation, all you have to say is, you just could and you say, God, don't, don't even go spiritual, omini, to omini. just say, God knows more than I know. That is enough for you to be fear to him. Somebody will know more than you know. Why are you fighting? Just take to his own counsel. That's one. Secondly, God loves you more than you can love yourself. I'm not saying more than you love yourself. More than you can love yourself. There's a difference. Which means even if they give you a million years, you cannot get to loving yourself anywhere near where God loves you. So anything that God, God's dealing with you is predicated on his love. Even when he smacks you, even when he rebukes you, even when he corrects you, even when he ignores you, even when he seems to have withdrawn from you, all that is fueled by his love because the Bible says God is love. The only thing that confuses us is that we use human confusion of love to judge God's love. It's not the same. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So do you have a plan for your growth, for your faithfulness, your faithfulness, do you have a plan for raising godly generation? Do you have a plan for plugging in with the move of the Holy Spirit? Do you have a plan to grow your investment in the things of God? The Bible says, he that wins a soul is wise. When we talk of evangelism, you think you are doing it for the church. Are you not the church? Who is the church? The church is you. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you are doing it for the church, it means you are doing it for ourselves. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Next thing is, can you break up your plan so that it is memorably smart? Smart means specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, time frame. The last but not the least is that, can you or would you collaborate with the pastor, with the pastorate to have a plan, to enhance your plan, to flavor your plan? To challenge your plan. So this year, we want to be a people that plan. And we want to be a people that plan biblically. We want to be a people that identify with the word of God and the prophecy for this year about glorious manifestation. And plan into it. And pray into it. And connect into it. And in all spheres of life. You have to have 
some plan or the other. It doesn't have to be elaborate. But don't leave everything to chance. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't leave everything to chance. That's why I don't envy animals. Because sometimes I look at them. They chop. They poo. They sleep. They wake up. They chop. They poo. They sleep. Must be a very boring life. Even if you're a lion, that's all a lion does. Well. He goes hunting to chop. Then he poo. He lies down. He sleep. He doesn't even watch TV. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And you're a human being and you want to live like that. Say God forbid. Praise the name of the Lord. On that note, let's stand up and take this prayer point. A few prayer points as we, as we uh, stand up. Hallelujah. Spirit of laziness. I am not your candidate. Release me and die. In the mighty name of Jesus, Spirit of laziness, I am not your candidate. Release me and die. Please me and die, 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 please me and die. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. It is written. God has not given me a spirit of fear. Therefore, every fear of planning. Release me and die in the mighty name of Jesus. Every part fear of planning for my life. Release me and die. Release me and die. Release me and die. Release me and die. For God has not given me a spirit of fear. Therefore, every fear of planning, release me and die. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I refuse to stumble blindly through life. Oh Lord, my Father. Give me a heavenly vision in the mighty name of Jesus. I refuse to stumble blindly through life. Oh Lord, my Father, give me a heavenly vision. I refuse to stumble blindly through life. Oh Lord, my Father, give me a heavenly vision. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Grace to think godly thoughts. Envelop my life in the name of Jesus. Grace to think only love thoughts. Envelop our lives. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. My soul, my life, hear in the word of the Lord. Descend and abide in the plans of God for me. In the mighty name of Jesus, my soul, my life, hear in the word of God. Design and abide in the plans of God for my life. In the name of Jesus, design and abide in the plans of God for a glorious manifestation this year. In the name of Jesus, my soul, my life, hear in the word of the Lord. Design and abide in God's plan for a glorious manifestation this year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so shall it be in the name of the Father.